we'll give this a shot. Looks like Facebook isn't connected. Let's try and get that up and running real quick. Download for Windows. All right, today we're going to be doing a Westworld open face. And I saw a GIF on Twitter that was pretty cool. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Or, let me see, mechanical open face. First, we got to get chat up and running. One, two, three, four. There we go. Okay. So, starting from where we left off, which was what? We were streaming and we had this guy, maybe? Yeah. It's been a while. I think I got everything I need. Is this where we left off? Let me see. Turn his color on. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to switch over here to a skin shader, so we can see his his uh, colors a little bit better. So this is what we ended up rendering, and then in Photoshop we were doing some stuff too. So let me, I want to see if I can find some reference. So I've got like this type of reference. This is what I want to do with his head and have that kind of, we can put some mechanical -y stuff behind there. They do have a, let me see if I can find the Westworld... Um, Westworld Season 3 Intro Opening Credits Let's see, Quality 1080p Go to the very end Maybe not quite the end, there we go So here Basically this is what we'll do today I've got that up, and I've got some reference images up, so we'll just go ahead and use that. Hey, uh, okay, good idea. Let me just go ahead and switch that over. Yeah, he just wrapped up, so let me grab my streaming drafts. Give that a shot. There you go. Cool. And also coffee, since I got woken up at 3.30 this morning. So we're going a little bit late. Okay, you guys can see ZBrush? Okay, I think we're good to go. So what we don't want to do is lose any of the information we've already done. So what I'm going to do is the sphere we don't really need. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that out of my scene. And why is that? Let me see. Color, white, color, fill object. There we go. So the hat and stuff we can go ahead and get rid of. And in fact, while I'm just focusing on the character itself, uh, I could go ahead and put that stuff in a folder. So an easy way to grab all of that stuff is just hit W, move multiple, control shift, drag over all that stuff, and then control shift, tap the things I don't want. So like the eyeballs and the teeth and all that stuff. And then control tap to invert that, control F to go ahead and throw that in a folder. And then, oh, name it hat. And then now we have the hat we can just turn off. And then we'll go ahead and turn off move multiple. Hey, from India. I'm going to guess it's not early over there right now. Let me try to wake up for a minute. <laughs> okay, so. We've already got this thing sculpted, and we already have. We've already gone through and divided this thing up. So ideally, what we could do is go through here and start splitting the face along pre-existing geometry. However, if we can't do that, we're going to have to re-slice this geometry. So this isn't a big deal. Uh, and this is what these are the control loops used to uh, create this geometry, which we did last time. God, it's been a month already. So here's what we're going to do. Let me think about this. Okay, let's hit control, well, 
let's test something first. So what I can do is I can go ahead and work on a copy of this and I can easier, either use project history or the clone uh, project history or uh, project all to go ahead and get my details back. So what I'm going to do, if you guys want to catch up uh, my YouTube channel here on this live stream and actually also on my uh, Pixelogic streaming here. Yeah, they got it. Okay, so here's the uh, Pixelogic workshop here. And then here's the uh, here's the latest live stream right there. So you can see here's the creating of the anatomy in the body and then you we did the hat and a little bit more of the clean up the anatomy there. So what we're gonna do now is let's go ahead and split that face up. And like I said before, we can, I'm gonna go ahead and keep this, the one with my detail, I'm gonna duplicate this off. Hold down shift, turn everything else off. And now let's explore um, how much of this we can change. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down control shift and we're just gonna grab all the poly groups uh, that make up the face here. And I'm just gonna delete hidden. And a cool feature of this is if you go to lowest and delete hidden, you actually retain all of your high subdivision levels. So if I go all the way back up, all that geometry has disappeared, but we have a nice clean cut uh, along here. Um, you know what, that might actually that might be beneficial actually. Okay, let's go ahead and duplicate this head off. I'm gonna to go to lowest subdivision level one, we're gonna delete higher, and then we're gonna turn off, hold down shift and just turn off these paint brushes here, go into solo mode. And then uh, we'll go ahead and start slicing this guy up. So we'll turn off perspective so we can see a little bit more straight on. And I'm gonna be looking for my cut lines. So ideally what we could do, let's hit control W, oops. There we go. Don't hit Control W on Chrome. So we're going to hit uh, Control W and ZBrush to make this all one poly group here, and then we're going to turn off X Symmetry because it looks like it's got a line going right down the middle of the face. So I'm going to grab half of these polygons here, and then get rid of this here. And we're going to hit, uh, we'll go ahead and hit Control W here. So this can be one seam line, and it also looks like we have a line that kind of goes along here. So I'm gonna hold down Control Shift, to select Lasso, and yeah, it looks like we're gonna have to slice this guy up a little bit. All right, let me think. So if we slice that guy up, we don't need a mouth bag anymore. In fact, let's not do that. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to undo until we're back to like subdivision level two. That should be enough detail. Or you know what, let's go subdivision level three, delete higher, delete lower, and I'm just going to get rid of this mouth bag. So control shift, control shift drag to uh, get rid of that mouth bag there. And then we can do delete hidden. Yeah, maybe not, let's play it safe. Subdivision level one, I'm gonna hit uh, W and then hold down control. We have X symmetry turned on. Control drag down the head so I can go through here and we can mask the lasso, the back of this jaw here. So we can go through here. Let's control tap, fade that out a little bit and we'll go ahead and move his mouth. Just open his mouth a little bit, just make it a little bit easier uh, to work with here. Hold down shift, drop our Z intensity down. There we go. And if you want to move these points separately, it's a little bit easier if you go over here to auto masking and you turn on topological. So you can kind of move this upper lip independently from that lower lip there. All right, so we've got that going. And now, now we can go ahead and start slicing this guy up. We want to leave the eye alone. We want to leave those polygroups alone, really. We just want to replace, go through and slice these polygroups right through here. Hmm, okay, let's get, and you know what, we can manually project this stuff a little bit better if we need to. Okay, so I'm not gonna worry too much about that. So let's go ahead and hold down Control Shift, isolate that, well, let's delete. Let's go up one subdivision level. I'm trying to get just enough geometry here, so we'll get rid of the mouth bag, delete hidden. Let's go ahead and relax some of these 
Roberts in the corner there. And let's hit Control Shift. Because I want to leave these eyelids and these eye holes here alone. That looks like. We'll go ahead and keep that for resurfacing purposes. So we'll hit Control W. And then Control Shift and Alt. And we'll go ahead and let's turn off X symmetry. Tap X, there we go. Again, get rid of this. Control W. And you know what? Let's do this. Auto groups. Auto groups. That's going to be in your polygroup menu. So we've got the midline here, and then we need to go through and we need to slice. Uh, looks like right through here. So let's say Control Shift. And we're going to slice. Looks like it goes over the ear to eh, kind of the behind the mouth here. We're just going to do one side and we're going to mirror this over. And then this one, and we'll clean this uh, these polygons up as well. And then we're also going to have another slice going from kind of behind the mouth. Comes down here, actually. Kind of looks more like this. This is going to slice down through this way. And then there's another little slice, goes to a corner, and kind of goes like, I don't know, that way. And that'll be our panel lines that we're going to go ahead and give extrude thickness, re zero mesh this. Make it as seamless as we can, and then go ahead and project our detail back. Alrighty. Um, trying to replay Thomas' stream as redirecting me here. Uh, probably because I'm streaming. I don't know if there's, you can go see, play previous episodes there. Oh yeah, this is live by the way. So. <laughs> yes, there you go. All right, so uh, we got this. So let's go ahead and let's clean this up a little bit. Um, this might be okay. So down in here, we've got a little bit of these overlapping uh, slices here. So let's go ahead and hold down Shift and smooth this out a little bit. Or you know what we could do? Let's run a quick uh, weld points here. Yeah, it looks like when we sliced over here, it got a little bit holy. So we'll go ahead and rebuild this really quickly. Because um, I, I could use Ziri Mesher to kind of simplify this a little bit, but I think it's going to have a little bit of a hairy time over here. So let's go ahead and Alt mark these ones, and we're going to go ahead and say Delete a Single Poly. That's with your Z Modeler brush, B Z M. And then we'll go through here, hold down Control Shift, and then let's go ahead and grab this. Delete Hidden. All right, and then through here, I really don't care if this, this can all just be one poly group. So we're just gonna go ahead and say close holes, convex hole is fine. And that'll go ahead and mark that. And then this one, I want the same poly group. So uh, hold down shift, start painting, or sorry, alt start painting, tap shift. And that'll go ahead and inherit that poly group. And then same thing down here, alt start painting, tap shift. And there we go. So we've cleaned up those poly groups here and let's do another weld just because I think, you know, let's crank that weld distance up just a little bit. There we go. Because I think these things are still going to be a little bit rotten. And in here we can go ahead and clean this up too. So we can go ahead and collapse an edge. Collapse an edge. There we go. 
All right, so zero measure should have a little bit easier time there. And really, we only have to do one side of this head, I believe. And then we can mirror it over. As long as that midline doesn't move too much, we should be okay. So let's try that. Let's go ahead and say Control Shift, and we'll get rid of this side over here. Delete hidden. And now let's go ahead and zero mesh this. Keep groups. I shouldn't have to smooth groups because I sliced it, although I think I am going to have a little bit of problems in here now that I think about it. Yeah, that's what I figured. So let's go ahead and say, let's go ahead and mark these ones, and then these ones we can go ahead and start deleting. And again, just Alt, start painting, tap Shift, and then I'll go ahead and inherit those polygroups. Just doing a little bit of cleanup work here. All right, that should work a little bit better. So let's give this a shot. Let's go ahead and turn our zero mesher um, depth size down to Z. Yeah, let's keep it up and then keep groups. Let's turn smooth groups down to zero and then just hit zero mesh. And then let's do half. Okay, that's not too terrible. And let's do a little bit of cleanup work here. Delete hidden, collapse edge. bridge two points here because so I'm going to keep going down I just want to make sure that these things are relatively secure here all right do another half. All right, I think I can live with that. Uh, so a little bit more cleanup work here. Let's go ahead and just use our move brush. Scooch this over. And this we can go ahead and say split edge here. Move brush, smooth this out a little bit. And we can just collapse this. Not ideal, but again, I think I can live with it. All right, so let's do a quick uh, mirror across the X, mirror and weld, and then let's go ahead and just run a quick smooth here. That looks fine. We can clean this up a little bit here. We'll go ahead and say turn on X symmetry here. We'll go say delete edge, and there we go. So we've sliced up the face, and now we just need to get our detail back while we also um, add some thickness to this. Hey everybody, thanks for showing up. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's see if I can fix this title. Um, get rid of that. So back in the good old days, they had me paste this, Picture Logic Streaming. Pavlovich workshop title. Oh, okay. Thank you. Sorry, all I'm reading over there is Thomas's video not showing up and the title being wrong. Okay, so we have this all split up. So now let's go ahead and see if we can't get some thickness on these edge loops. So the edge loops around the eyes. Um, really, I don't need those ones. Those are just to like maintain the loops that I wanted. So we'll go ahead and make this all one polygroup here. And there's a couple different ways you can go about this. So one way you can do this, you can go in here to geometry and you can go over here to edge loops or edge rings, edge loops. 
and then there's panel loops. So if we do a panel loops now, it's going to <laughs> smooth the heck out of it. So turn that polish down to zero. And you can also, you can keep the polish up a little bit if you wanted to, but if you want it to maintain your volumes, I would say close circle. You can see it to maintain your volumes a little bit better. However, it's inflating, which we don't want. So if we move elevation to negative 100 and we do panel loops, then uh, it'll go ahead and just give us panel loops inwards. Now let's go ahead and say polish down to zero. And here we go. But if we want this to be relatively seamless, um, let's see if we turn that bevel to zero. Yeah, so that'll give us a seamless look, but still give us interior uh, thickness and polygon. So that's an easy way to do it. Um, we don't necessarily need all of those edge loops though. So we can go down here to loops and we can say panel loops and then it'll just give us one, uh, just less geometry to kind of worry about. So here's our uh, seamless person. We can do control shift, control shift A, and now we have uh, little chunks. Now I'm looking at this and uh, that's a, uh, I guess it's probably a little bit thicker than that. So there's two things we can do here. Uh, we can go through here and we can change that thickness or since these are all the same polygroup on the inside, we can just go in here and say Q mesh, polygroup all, or let's do extrude polygroup all and then hold down shift as you pull and then I'll go ahead and add a little bit more thickness. I need to be careful because on the ear, um, it's gonna start doing some zany stuff there. So in that case, it might be worth doing thickness, but you know what? We can also control thickness just on individual pieces. So I'm not gonna worry too much about that. So you could also alternatively, um, if we duplicate this off and then we go back to this one that has the history on it. If we go back, um, while you have these poly groups, you can um, go over here to geometry, edge loop, and you can do, hmm, what can you do? Not edge loop, modify topology. And under here, there's gonna be unweld groups border. So now all of these poly groups are unwelded. So you can hold down control shift and isolate them. Um, and then you can like split hidden. And then you can go through here and you can do again, extrude poly group ball. And you can just pull in your own controllable thickness this way. And you can just do that for every single sub tool. Um, nothing wrong with that. Give it a shot. So I got this one. Let's go ahead and delete that one here. And then now we have our panel loops version. Uh, we do have one small problem in that we moved this one down. Uh, and that one was the one that had our detail on it. So we can actually, what can we do? We can match the high res. Uh, let me see. Oh, I split that off, didn't I? So panel loops one. Oh, damn. Because we did have the one that did have history, but okay, you know what, that's fine. So let's go ahead and delete that one here. And then, uh, so we got the one, we got the one with our panel loops, and then we have our high res here that we need to go ahead and match. Um, we might have a little bit of a problem with that lower lip, but we can go ahead and fix that. So let's go down to sort of level one. Again, we have X symmetry turned on, hold down control. So if my brain was working a little bit better, we could avoid this. But since it's not, let's do it this way. Command control, mask pin. I'm just looking for that jaw movement here. Control tap, W, and go into solo mode. And we can just drop that lower lip down. This won't be the most accurate way to do this. So what you're going to want to do is not what I did, but actually go through and move your high res and then start uh, slicing your low res, or at least keep undo history so that you can get that back. But in a pinch, this will work just fine. I think we'll be able to get our history back. And we can always go through like anything that doesn't project correctly. We can uh, manually project it with Z, um, Z project brush, and then also just going in and you know doing some corrective sculpting. Okay, so now we go back up here to the highest, and we have a version with our high res detail and our poly paint if we want to get that back. 
and then we have this one which is just all of our pieces sitting here. Now I'm just going to worry about projecting detail back onto these outside ones and I've never actually done this before so everybody cross your fingers. So also another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and crease our uh, poly groups because if I don't, if I hit control D as I start subdividing, I'm going to start splitting along those seams which is kind of cool looking uh, but not really what I'm going for here. So we're going to go down here to geometry, crease, PG. So now when I hit control D, uh, it'll maintain um, my, what are those, my polygroups and my, um, my, my vert positions there. Cool. Um, yes, project all, yeah, the front panels. So, that's basically what we'll, be, what we'll be doing. So let's try, let's give it a shot. Um, again, I might run into a few little issues down here, but I think we can fix those. We have Xymetry turned on. Uh, we can also use, if you wanted to, you could use project history on this. You don't have to use um, Z project or anything like this. You can just control tap this point in history on this sub tool. It can be a completely different sub tool. In fact, well, maybe we'll use that. So we'll have, this is our detail. And let's switch over here to start material here. And then this is our uh, divided up mesh. I'll go ahead and grab this one. Or I guess it'd be easier just to go inside and click this one, then control shift drag to invert that. And you know what? All these middle poly groups, did it make them the same? Okay, here's what we do. Control shift, tap this one, control shift X to expand, and then control shift drag. So now we just have the outer shell uh, poly groups here. So. Um, let's go through here and very quickly we got this one showing and this one uh, selected and I'm just going to do a quick project all again everybody crush fingers or you can do project um, history with the showing and sure we can go ahead and project that so now I went ahead and projected uh, to that polygon and I think that did okay You know what? We'll go ahead and keep. Yeah, okay. So I'll give this a shot. So I go ahead and I bring everything else back. We might have a few little polygons uh, clipping through the ear here. Let's go ahead and smooth that out a little bit. And then we're going to hit Control D to subdivide. And then again, Control Shift, Control Shift X, 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 no. Control shift drag, and let's go ahead and do another project history. And the inside stuff I'm not overly concerned about. Um, so here's what we can do. We can uh, isolate this, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and inflate just to get this stuff out of the way. Uh, that is separated. Hmm. You know what? I'll fix that in a bit. So we've got this here. Let's go ahead and say, bring everything else back. Control D to subdivide. Isolate. Control Shift X, X, X. They're starting to separate a little bit here. We might be able to fix that. And then let's go ahead and say project all. Or project history. Control D. I think we're close. Let's take a look at this. Skin Shader 4 turned on. So we have our original here. And then this one. Pretty close. And then this one here. And again, we can fix those little inside ear areas. So let's take a look just at the details we're getting. Looks like we need to do one more subdivide. 
All right. Control D. Let's turn on our polyframe here. Again, I'm just doing Control Shift X. It's under your visibility menu. time. All right. I think we're good enough. Whew. It worked ish. The video title is wrong. Still. Well, I tried fixing it. Sorry, everybody. I'm Thomas Whittlebach. We're going to be sculpting jewelry of an old man's head. Uh, and it's going to split open. So let's go over here and let's turn off this here. And so we have all of X symmetry turned on. So I'm going to go over here and we're going to grab this inside poly group here, uh, mask it, invert that. And now we can go through here and we can just move these interior uh, spaces out. In fact, let's drop this down so to level three, let's say. And we'll just go ahead and fix these little areas here. I don't really care too much about what's going on on the inside. Although I do kind of care. I do kind of want to keep those somewhat together. Let's also do this. Let's go over here to mass by polygroups up to 100. And we can go ahead and fix some of these scenes. I probably shouldn't have been uh, messing around too much with these uh, when I was smoothing and stuff. Probably should have left those alone. And then in here, uh, looks like we got a little bit of cross contamination here. Let's see, isolate this. And on this one, let's hold down shift and then go down here to our smooth brush modifiers and then do min connected to one. So we can go ahead and really get that back up to where it should be. by poly groups up to 100 again. Let's see if we can just run a pinch along here. Oop. So if we go through and smooth, that's going to reveal our seam lines here, um, which isn't too terrible. Um, I'm wondering if and this would have been one of those things where doing a very, very careful precise job would have benefited me. But sometimes when you're discussing process and it's early, your brain doesn't make the best decisions, but I think we'll get good enough results for government work. So we'll go ahead and just close these gaps up just a little bit. And we could also try and use our Ziri Mesher brush uh, to really fine tune these projections as well. So I'm just trying to get it close enough. And so again, let's go ahead and isolate this. And we can also mask our border in here. If I don't want to mess around with our borders, we can go in here to masking, mask by feature border, and that'll at least keep those verts nice and solid for us. So now we can have this, and if we wanted to animate these things out, it's like eventually what we'd end up doing is just going through here and we could say, uh, oh, you know what? These ones in the middle are supposed to split down the middle. That's okay. So we can go ahead and do 
Let's go ahead and split these off into their own component parts. Control Shift, Control Shift A to go ahead and grab all these pieces in here. And we'll go ahead and say, let's do this. Delete lower, grab this one. And we'll go ahead and say, split, hidden. And then we can go in here and we can reconstruct back. And then over here, control shift, control shift A, split hidden, reconstruct. And then now I've just got these two pieces. So control shift, control shift A, split hidden. And here, this is our original. And then we've got this piece here, so we'll go ahead and reconstruct this back. So, really quickly, as long as those vert positions don't move, we can do this. Delete hidden, isolate just this side, control W, tap here, You can also try freezing your uh, subdivision levels, but I get kind of spotty results on that. Isolate this, delete hidden. All right, same settings. Let's go down here to our edge loops. And then we're gonna go in here again, panel loops, elevation negative 100, blah, 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 zero, no bevels and go ahead and panel loop that. And then this one here, we'll go ahead and panel loop it. Double loops one, polish one, and then delete hidden. Oh, delete higher. And then panel loops. Now, Let's see here, project history. So increase polygroup, control D, isolate, project history. Need to fix a little bit of that nose, it's okay. time. Isolate, project history, yeah that's about as far as we got. And then same thing for the lower jaw here and hopefully this isn't a bust. Hopefully uh, I'll turn that off. Hopefully it ends up working. If not, we'll figure out something else to do today. <laughs> so uh, we'll go ahead and do a project history again. Yes. Control, oops, crease polygroup. Control D. One more time. And you know what, honestly, I think when I did my delete higher and delete lower, I did lose some detail, but again, we can always get that back. It's not rocket science to get those, because um, I remember this being a little bit crisper as far as 
the amount of detail we got on the original guy here. Yeah. So be careful of that too. The very first step we did where we were like slice the head off and we're projecting that detail, we did lose a little bit. We can get that back. Uh, project bus useful for partial projecting. Yeah, we can use that uh, if we clean that up a little bit. Uh, what's my objective in the stream? Uh, to keep myself awake for the next hour and a half while I use ZBrush. So let's go ahead and turn this head off here. Alrighty, so we have our original head here with our most of our detail and then we have these uh, here that have our um, human detail. Now let's see if we can go through here and I'm going to go through. Uh, X-Symmetry is turned off but I'm wondering here if we can't snap those to a midline here. I wonder if that'd be easy enough to do. So we go down here to so there's a little one. Let's hold down control shift. Let's isolate just these. Control tap. Invert that. W. Let's go to unmesh mesh center. Reset the world and just zip these up. Go up one, zip them up. Go up one. I'm just masking and inverting so I can pull all those polygons together. Um, they're not welded or anything, I'm just pulling them together kind of in a, yeah, that worked fine. And we'll do the exact same thing for the head. So, a little bit slower. Subdivision level one, I'm basically looking for these interior polygroups just along the middle here. And once that gives those to me, I'm gonna control tap to mask it, control shift tap to bring everything else back, control tap to invert that mask, W, go to unmesh mesh center so it's right in the middle of all those. Reset to world, holding down alt, so I can reset that world pivot. And I'm just going to, uh, just kind of scale along that midline. Uh, go up one subdivision level. Now when I do that, it's going to grab more of those spans, so I don't want that. So just one more time, let's go through here, and again I'm just going to grab those midline polys here. I don't want to grab more than that. Get rid of you, get rid of you. Mask, invert, still in the middle. Squeeze them together. Go up one subdivision level. We'll go ahead and check. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so now we got that seamless look. However, uh, it is going to divide right down the middle of the face. So sorry for taking you guys on the long route. Um, there's there's definitely ways we could have done that a little bit better. Uh, but you know what? We got there, and that's the important part. <sighs> uh, so this is the Intuos tablet, pen tablet, Intuos Pro Medium. That's all I ever use. It's been a, I used to have a Cintiq at Sony and, uh, well, Daybreak now. And uh, I prefer the tablet for ergonomic reasons. Uh, why separate different faces into uh, different polygroups? Oh, yeah, we're just doing this is the only reason. So if you watch the previous streams, uh, this one here and this one here, we were just basically uh, sculpted an old man uh, and we divided his face up into different polygroups so we could have um, a little bit easier time if we wanted to like animate those polygroups. I guess we did that in the other stream. This one. Okay, yeah, this is the one where we go through and we're just learning anatomy and we're kind of going through it and sculpting and then we go through and we do um, divide this up into polygroups so we can have an easier time sculpting. Uh, my harebrained idea this morning well, and if you want to watch these, you can just go here. Uh, was to do just kind of being able to take keep the face details and then split it uh, along those axes. So I can hit uh, like W. So we can. Um, what's the easiest way to do this? Control Shift, Control Shift A, mask and invert this W. And so wherever this pivot ends up being, uh, we can just you know rotate this off, and then we'll have like a little skull uh, sitting underneath there, or a little mechanical. Uh, Dealey Bob Skull. Okay, go ahead and save it. Okay, that's another thing too, is uh, we didn't lose anything, it's not a big deal. Uh, but one thing you might want to do is if you're doing a lot of splitting uh, of subtools and stuff, it might be a good idea to go ahead and um, 
do a quick save here. So here's our recovered Z project. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll go ahead and load that up. Got some old farmer guys in there. There we go. So it didn't lose anything, uh, but let's go ahead and save just to play it safe here. So we're going to go over here to streaming, gauntly, and we'll call this Splithead. So now, because I actually split him right along that seam, I bet what we could do is, since I, w I went ahead and have this saved out, uh, we can go through here and I can actually say, you know what, let's go down here to geometry, lowest, let's grab this and this. There's a floating, oh, and I guess that little baby poly group here too. Uh, so now if I go delete hidden, um, we are going to lose a little bit of detail, and I'll show you that in a second. But we are going to uh, maintain our subdivision levels. So when I go back up through here to sudden level 5, uh, we still have this, but you're going to see it got a little bit soft. I think it's okay because if we go back to before we did that, where we had our details sitting here, and it's like, okay, control click that. So we're, that's the point in history. And then with this visible, again, you can go over here to project history, and that'll go ahead and give us all of our detail back. Crush fingers, it's thinking. It's kind of high poly. About five million polygons. Let's see what it does. If not, again, um, I could manually do it. I could duplicate it off and then use a Z project brush. So worst case scenario, did I actually do anything? Yeah, I guess it did. Let's go ahead and turn back on our scene here. There we go. So it uh, looks like it's separated just a tiny bit. I guess when we were masking the jaw and stuff, um, it's got a little bit separated, but that's okay. We can go through here and uh, again, move these back. So now when we were talking about the project brush, um, let's go ahead and duplicate this off. And I'm going to grab this one here because we're going to grab some more of that skin detail so we can use a Z project brush and I'll show you how it works. Um, so for this one, I'm going to go all the way back and we're going to say, you know what, let's go edit, delete undo history. So we're just back to where we started here. So we've got all this detail here. we got all the skin detail and all this painting detail we did. Um, so I'm going to show this one here and this time we're going to just do a manual uh, projection here. So we're going to go to the, let's go to this head here. And let's say delete lower, control shift, control shift A, split hidden, reconstruct, because we're just going to have one side of the head and the other side of the head too. Let's hide that one temporarily, sorry. I feel like I'm moving through molasses this morning. Ugh. Here, here. And then reconstruct. Okay. And then, uh, let's do it on this one too. Delete lower, isolate, control shift A, split hidden, reconstruct. It's a very process intensive day. Sometimes we just have fun and make things and sometimes it's a bunch of this kind of stuff where it's like, here's technique and process. Not my favorite thing in the world. Okay. So uh, we have this eyeball over here and you see our detail got a little bit soft, but if we have a, available to us our original over here, uh, we can just isolate this top one, this top poly group here, here. Uh, and then with these two showing, instead of doing project history, you can literally, I guess we'll go ahead and turn on poly paint here. Uh, you can go over here and you can just do a project all, and then I'll go ahead and project um, to all that skin details. We get a little bit more of our skin detail back. Uh, now you do want to check that in case you are getting some weird uh, projection issues. If you are, you can also do, I think this will work, isolate this one. And we got both these showing. And just so we can see this a little bit better, let's go ahead and turn off our poly paint here. So BZP is our Z project brush. And then we can hold down Alt to pull towards the surface and let go of Alt to push down. And you can just manually go through here so when you See, um, you can kind of actually, yeah, you actually have to have these things showing. You can't have it just hiding. Um, so you want to be careful. In this case, I might actually go in here just in case. Well, we have everything hidden. I'm going to stay away from that midline, though. Because, um, again, 
you, get, you know, you can get a little bit scary, but you can see we're getting a little bit of detail back. Um, but also it looks like you had some weird stuff happening in here. Anyway, that's how you would use the Z-Project brush. Uh, in this case, I think I'm good to go. So we could go ahead and group all these heads and we can start doing a little bit of a cleanup pass. Um, so let's see here. Yeah, I was doing some weird stuff on that projection. So be wary of that. Also, here's a stupid thing I did. Um, when I went through and I did crease by polygroup, I should have creased these corners that it came to because it ended up having a softening effect over here. So I can kind of manually fix this. I can go into my move accu. Let's go ahead and mass by polygroup such a hundred. And I can kind of pull down to a corner. So not totally lost, but something you want to probably want to avoid in the future if you're going to try this. Go ahead and crease any, uh, you can actually, instead of creasing the corners manually, you could literally just go into your crease options. And so this is the kind of thing where it's like, okay, I'm going to do a tutorial on this. And I would go through and do a dry run and then all the stupid things I'm doing, I would make note not to do them. But when you're doing it live, you just got to look stupid. That's part of it. So that's part of the fun of doing it live. You look like an idiot. Everybody's like, who is this guy and why is he streaming? Could he make any more mistakes? And you know, I just gotta take it. But I think we'll get close enough here. So another thing we could try and do is since we do have our original head and even though we moved the head and the lips, uh, you know, we could uh, try and flatten these things out. So let's go back to our original head here and then BZP. And maybe even we have X symmetry turned off. Let's go up here to mass by polygroups up to 100. And let's see if we can't just like Z project that back. Yeah, to that corner. That, that pretty much did the trick. And then over here, oops, grab this one here, BZP, and Z project this back. Look at that. That worked. Okay, so a couple more things we need to fix, like on the ears here. I guess we'll just fix these manually as well. Let's go to either side of the head. Or this might all be one piece, actually. Yep, all one piece. We're just going to isolate this one here. So this interior polygroup is giving us a little bit of grief. Control shift tap this one, uh, mask it, invert it. And in fact, we can also drop in subdivision levels. It might make it a little bit easier to work with as we go through here. Have X symmetry turned on. Now we'll go ahead and pull this geometry. I want to make sure I stay away from any because whenever you start getting in these tight places in here, uh, it's gonna yeah you're gonna have some slight geometry issues. Let's also turn down our Z intensity a bit. So another thing you can do I might make it a little bit easier to work on is go down here to Display Properties and you can hit Flip. Uh, okay, mm. ah, this is kind of a pain. So you can flip this geometry, cross your fingers, turn off double, and you can kind of go through here and you can kind of start sculpting this back, but uh, it doesn't look like it's going to help us that much. All right, let's do this. Clay brush, mass by poly groups up to 100. And I'm just going to manually just knock this back. Again, this is totally messy. And having if I was to do it again, we would do it a little bit differently. But you know what? Let's call that good enough. 
All right. Um, do you ever use Z-spheres? Do you prefer blocking out a mesh with Dynamesh or Z-spheres? Oh, boy. Yeah, I've used Z-spheres. So um, here's a bunch of stuff on Z-spheres in here and Z-sphere posing. Uh, as far as which I prefer, sometimes it's easier to do Z-spheres like uh, in my previous uh, live stream here. What would that be under? That would be under live stream full episodes. Uh, like if I'm going to do creature stuff, it's a lot easier sometimes to use just Z-spheres to kind of get the shape that you want. That's a mechanical skull. Uh, you get the shape you want with Z-spheres, but sometimes it's easier to use insert mesh brushes. Um, honestly, yeah, yeah, I like using Z-spheres. And if I'm going to make a body or something, uh, I, I might prefer to use Z-spheres. Now, if I'm making a human, I'm probably going to prefer to use a base mesh just because, you know, unless I'm practicing anatomy or something. Uh, base mesh will usually do the trick. Uh, prepping the model for that, would you have to sculpt the inside faces of the head? Um, yeah, if you wanted to prep it for uh, 3D printing, uh, you'd want to make sure that you had at least decent geometry. But yeah, we're trying to just get those inside faces. When we extruded them, it had a little bit of a, when you just pull on a surface normal, sometimes you'll get some overlaps. Um, I don't know if there's a really elegant way to avoid that when you're extruding. Um, cool. This is ZBrush. Uh, let's see. Preparing the model, scoping inside. For, oh, for the mechanical stuff. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. Let's talk about the mechanical stuff and how we're going to do it. So we've got the head here. And like I said before, we're just going to, uh, these things here are, let's turn that off. So we've got this head and we've got these seams and it's going to open up and there's going to be a little skull inside. However, uh, we don't really have a skull inside right now. So let's go ahead and make that. So we do have eyeballs and we do have teeth and we do have a head here. So what I'm going to do, uh, we'll go ahead and keep this head around just, just in case I need it again, but we're going to duplicate this off, isolate it just so we can look at it. And then on this one, let's go ahead and say, I was doing some weird stuff to that. Um, Let's go down to subdivision level four. I don't need all, I don't need a crazy amount of geometry, but I am going to do a run a quick close holes operation, mirror and weld, just to go ahead and give us a nice solid base to work from. Um, another thing I'm going to do is close his mouth. Uh, let's see, we'll just pinch his mouth shut. And we'll go ahead and turn off mass by polygroups. Or let's do this. Topological. Upper lip down lower lip up. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm just going to use this as a proxy. So let's go ahead and again, go ahead and inflate these lips and we'll go down here and we'll say Dynamesh. So now we've got a solid Dynamesh mesh and this will be the start of our mechanical skull underneath. So we've got this and we've got our teeth position and we've got our eyeball. So let's take a look at this mechanical skull bits. Can't get a real good shot of it, at least in this video. But you can see this is, oh boy, that's kind of, it's kind of free form. Uh, we may be able to get a better shot of it in here. Let me see if I can bust out an image here. Yeah, it's a little bit cleaner. Oops. Something like this here. Let's even get a shot of this. Let's see, open image in new tab. Oh, okay, that's fine. Okay, so yeah, it looks like basically just a skull uh, with some panel loops. If you want to do a little bit deeper into mechanical skulls, uh, boy, are you in luck, because I did, just did a whole series on mechanical skulls. So we go in here to playlists. There's a mechanical skull high-res rendering substance. And so if you want to see um, you know, how we turn basically this ape skull that we've sculpted into a high-res uh, mechanical skull, which ended up being, you know, at the end of the day, you, you know, take it into iRay. So this is the end result of just, you know, going through and sculpting in ZBrush the mechanical skull parts, splitting it up into different pieces and rendering it out and giving it a texture and stuff like that. So that whole playlist you can find on my YouTube channel. But we're going to do, we may do things a little bit differently on here. But the first thing we need to do is integrate those teeth into the skull here. Um, 
Now, I don't have to start with his head as a skull, but you know what? It might be kind of fun just to make a skull out of his head because, you know, anatomy. So we're going to use the clip brush. We're going to get that nasal cavity going like so. Go ahead and soften that up. And then uh, we can go ahead and mask here and kind of push this back in. Invert that, go ahead and pull it back in here. And let's go ahead and, again, we got the teeth already in there, so let's go ahead and integrate this a little bit. So we can build up that jawbone or uh, decide where that jawbone's gonna go. And in fact, if we want reference, I wonder if we have, let's go into our preferences here. And underneath cam view on, we got a skull here. So we can actually use this as reference as we're working. Let's go ahead and make that a little bit bigger. Ah, uh, nice. So, skull reference. Uh, yep, so we're gonna go through here. All this stuff here is just like skin and tissue and stuff like this. So we can go ahead and knock this back. And again, we could start with a skull. We could go in there and you can just grab a skull from um, tool, rankings line, anatomy model. And in fact, I wonder, did we start with this? I don't remember. Uh, so we've got this one here, it's gonna say delete other. We'll go hold down control shift. And we can say, give me your skull. Control shift A, again, delete hidden. Yeah, I guess that's fine. And then we'll go ahead and say insert this. So we turn. Bloop. So you can go ahead and just turn on transparency. And you can go through here and you can like use this as your skull start. Um, I don't honestly remember. I think we just started sculpting this guy. So uh, you could try fitting this skull to that. However, uh, or you can use it as a reference too. It's if you don't want to do this method. You can go through here and you just shove it back here. And uh, you could also do split screen if you wanted to. Uh, but you know, while we're rotating, uh, we'll have a pretty good idea of you know how this is gonna turn out. So let's go ahead and turn my smooth brush back up. And we'll go through here and we'll just start making the skull a little bit. Now this is gonna be a mechanical skull. It doesn't have to be perfect. Although if you wanna make a perfect skull, by all means, we're gonna go through here. And this is going to be the, that, uh, what do they call it, that tennis ball of your face, that cylinder, that mount, that tooth cylinder here. Uh, make sure we get that plugged in. And then also where this, so here's your zygomatic arch. We go through here with our Damien standard brush. We can start, you know what, let's drop this resolution down just a tiny bit here. So through here, here's that zygomatic arch going back to your auditory meatus. And then we don't need these ears on here. So let's do this. Let's hold down shift to smooth and we'll go into Sculptures Pro and we'll just decimate the heck out of those ears. Now we got a little Voldemort look going. And we'll go ahead and turn Sculptors Pro off. So now, uh, again, we got our zygomatic arch, like so, and that's gonna go uh, back in here. And then your little ear hole is right here. And then your jaw, uh, this jaw, I'm just gonna have perfectly match where his actual jaw is. And you can see the bony landmarks on his face uh, should generally line up. And then, you know, while I'm here, I can actually look up here real quickly and we can kind of see, you know, where this stuff should end up. So we're in good shape here. And then this is where your jawbone's going to come down. So here it's going to kind of curve in and then it's going to kind of, yoop. And then all of this is basically gone-ish. So go ahead and say, you know what? You are pushed in. Now to give us uh, kind of a skull overview here, and then we'll go ahead and use our clay brush and we'll build this back up. And we'll push this in. All right, so we're getting a jaw going here. Or we're getting a skull going, I should say. It's going to fit inside of our head. Now I don't want to pull out any, and I can always modify this, and we'll test it to make sure it's staying within our head, but we don't want to have it pushing through the skin. So we have to work within the limitations of what we got here, uh, but I think we'll get pretty close. We'll go ahead and carve out some eye sockets here. And we'll go ahead and let's crank up our Z intensity a little bit. Let's crank our lazy radius up. If you need a nice smooth line, that's a way to do that. We'll go ahead and turn off lazy radius here. And we'll go ahead and punch this in a little bit. There we go. 
and then if you wanted to push uh, through the zygomatic arch, so like this jaw is probably going to be in just a tiny bit here, and you can see there's a space right there. Um, I'm, I'm afraid to pull this out because I know I got my skin sitting right there, so we'll push this in. Now the skull does look a little bit weird, but you know what? Let's call that artistic license. And we'll go through here with our trim dynamic. And he does have a, a bit of a brow ridge. We're going to go ahead and shave this back. In fact, let's do this also. Let's go into our deformation menu and then deflate this so like negative three. There we go. Just to back it off of that a little bit. And if you need to, you can go through here and um, again, you hold down shift and go into Sculptures Pro and we can knock these things back. You can also go in here and inflate. Uh, but I'm going to turn on back face masking. It's under your brush settings just because I want to inflate just, and you can't uh, use back face masking when you have Sculptures Pro. That's why it yelled at me. Okay, I think we're in better shape now. So we've got our basic skull shape. And let's go ahead and separate this jaw out. So let's go ahead and say, also let's go ahead and clip this. So hold down Control Shift. We're going to clip here, here, oops. Alt tap once to get a smooth curve, and then alt tap twice to get a sharp curve. Smooth. Let's move those that geometry in. Okay, so this will be basically the start of my mechanical skull here. And And again, we're going to turn this into kind of a working Westworld thing. So I'm going to take this, but I do want to make sure that overall the shape of uh, what we're looking for is here before I start doing anything drastic to the forms here. Make sure your volumes are good first, and then any details you put on of it, put onto it will kind of fall into place. If you don't, uh, you're asking for trouble. Alrighty, so we've got this, and we want to go ahead and separate this jaw out, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and control, because if we did want to animate the face opening, and we wanted to have a skull that articulated underneath it, uh, you know, obviously these things would have to operate separately. So we'll go ahead and, you know what, we'll just even take this here. So you could rebuild this jaw, you could go through and like ziri mesh it and extrude depth, uh, but we'll keep it sculptural for now. I may change my mind. I reserve that right. But, okay, so we'll hit Control W, make that all one polygroup here, Control Shift Tap to isolate that, so go ahead and split hidden. And then on this one here, we could extract, um, yeah, you know what? I think I convinced myself. Let's go down here. Uh, let's clean up these edges first a little bit. So we're gonna go in here to masking, mask by features, border, invert that mask, deformation, polish by features. Let's smooth that out a little bit. And then let's go ahead and zero mesh half depth size down to zero. And we don't need keep groups on because it's all one group. So I'm gonna simplify this down. And now if I go through here and we do a simple, I mean, you could like extract, but eh, this is just a little bit easier. So extrude. Polygroup all or all polygons here. And that'll give us our jaw thickness here. And we can still just keep sculpting. That's not really what I'm trying to get rid of. Um, it's really more so so I can get some decent thickness in through here. Oops, forgot I don't want to mess with that too much. All right, and then my reference, sorry. Oh, his eyeballs go with his skin. What? His eyeballs rotate up. How does that work? Is there even room for a whole eyeball in there? I don't think so. Hmm. I stumbled on a little secret. I'm going to rotate his face around his eyeballs. So his eyeballs are going to stay there and then his eyelids are going to go. All right, let me get cut up here. Um. <laughs> Make a lamprey eel or so amazing disgusting. All right. Maybe we'll have one coming out of his mouth, uh, Indiana Jones style. Uh, off and on, I was learning for a while. I don't have to actually sit down enough. Uh, cool. Yeah, if you want to know the basics, basics, like this is just kind of me 
messing around, but if you want to start uh, learning ZBrush, uh, I got a playlist in here somewhere for you, or you know it might be better. This is a little bit easier to look at. Um, this, these are a little bit more uh, divided up here. So if you go through here, uh, there's ZBrush for ideation. So this one, uh, here's 55 videos to get you all caught up in ZBrush as far as just like the basics and stuff like that. Um, there's more units to it, but the first one's for free on YouTube. So really any of these things, if you like, like oh, I want to learn how to make a mechanical skull, it's all right here. So here's the high res, here's the painter, here's the exporter and config stuff. So go here and check this stuff out. And uh, like I said before, Zebras for Ideation is a good place to get started, as any. Put that on there. Uh, I do have some intro to ZBrush stuff. It's a little bit dated. But the ZBrush for ideation is an intro to ZBrush. The first unit, basically, is an intro to ZBrush. Um, but the ZBrush, intro to ZBrush, uh, again, like I said, it's a little bit dated, but it's still got some good stuff in there. You can, like, there's some activities in there. So let's go ahead and uh, delete hidden on this one. And this one I'm just going to close holes, mirror, and weld. Um, this is fine. So I'm going to go through here, and we just dynamesh this again. And then we'll go ahead and just smooth this out. Again, oops, do a quick mirror and weld. What's going on here? Control Shift A, delete hidden, close holes, mirror and weld, redynamesh, Control W. Okay, so we've split the jaw off and uh, we got the head here and now we can start doing some mechanically stuff. Um, so the first thing we do, I don't guess I need this. I don't know, does that skull look like a skull to you? Um, again, if you wanted to get fancier, uh, this zygomatic arch doesn't come out. His cheekbones are a little bit thin on this particular gentleman. So what we could do, if you did if you did want to actually poke a hole through here, it's not impossible. Um, let's do this. I'm just going to throw in a cube here and go ahead and say split mass points. And we're going to use this as a boolean to go ahead and, oops, let's turn on LSIM. So we can go through and we're going to just punch a hole through that zygomatic arch. Now again, not a whole lot of room in there, but that's okay. We just need a little bit of wiggle room and we just really, we just need it to give us just a tiny bit and we can make the rest happen just with DynaMesh. Um, let's go ahead and just isolate this so we can see a little bit better. So this is what I'm working. So here, push this in and uh, if we wanna see the result we're gonna get, let's go ahead and, we can go ahead and say make that subtractive and then move this underneath and then we turn on light boolean and then this is the result we're going to get is just going to slice right through we could go ahead and make this a boolean mesh but you know what let's just do this let's take this one this already has dynamesh turned on so when we merge these down and control drag that'll just boolean out with that dynamesh so now we have a hole where this is and then we can go through here and uh you know do any do anything we want however again i don't have a whole lot of room here and i'm going to say you know what in my west world uh, they don't have zygomatic arch holes. It's just part of the engineering process. Sorry. So we're going to go through here, and we're going to say, delete that skull. Don't need it anymore. And now we have an upper jaw, lower jaw, teeth, eyeballs. And let's go ahead and make sure that our um, the rest of our body is going to work with this. Now I'm going to save this one, and we'll say this is our mechanical skull. So now that I have this, uh, I don't really need this sitting in our scene anymore. So I'm just going to clean up my scene file a little bit. I always have access to it. I always have a saved file ready to go. We can say delete this. And then this head right here is just the original high res. I don't really need that anymore either. So we'll go ahead and delete that out of our scene. And then anything else garbagey in here. The hat. Hmm. 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 Nah, you know what? We'll go ahead and say, delete that. So now turn on shift and I'm just making sure that skull isn't poking through his uh, body anywhere. And it looks like we're in good shape. Oh, except right here, we're not in good shape. So let's turn on transparency. You're gonna see this has to go back a little bit. All right, so let's go back to our skull here. And you know what? 
if you really want to see this kind of poking through, we can go up here. Let's go to render. Uh, now, if we do that, it's going to take all the color off everything. Hmm. Yeah, this is fine. So we're going to go through here and we're just going to move these little areas back. It's got a really thin head. There we go. So now, looking at my reference here, it just looks vaguely mechanically, so we can have a little bit of fun with this, I think. So let's go ahead and raise our resolution up just a tiny bit. And let's go ahead and we'll just kind of do a little bit of uh, surface exploration. Now what I'm gonna try and do is go through here and I'm only gonna, Dynamesh, there we go. Resolution up a little bit. There we go. Uh, I'm gonna try to keep my brush strokes to go uh, just to kind of push in. I can always move things around. It's not a big deal if I forget because uh, I can just test and make sure that you know the skin isn't poking around. Um, but let's drop that intensity down just a bit. Yeah, there we go. Um, but what I'm gonna do is uh, again try to make it so that um, I'm kind of going in instead of out. Uh, again, if you, this is probably going to be very similar to the mechanical skull series that already exists. So, uh, but you know what? Let's let's try a few different techniques so it's not too boring for you. So we've got this, and we can go through and explore. And one thing we can pr do pretty quickly is we can go through and we can just start um, kind of getting our shapes in, like what kind of shapes we want. So very quickly we can go through here and we can say, you know what, this is going to go this way and it's going to go maybe down and around the orbit here and this can all be its own piece like this. You can also just, um, you can paint this on if you wanted to because what we can end up doing is we can use like Z, what is it called? Z, do I should have, it should be installed by default and it's called polygroup it. So you can use polygroup it to go through and divide up your mesh into mechanical panels and then use your panel loops like we did earlier. Um, but if you're just kind of exploring the shapes and let's turn all this off and we'll just turn the teeth back on. Um, I'll kind of leave it up to you, but let's go ahead and say, you know what, you can kind of let these teeth in just a little bit. Because the thing is, you got to fool people, so this is going to be kind of gums. However, um, yeah, so this would be kind of gums here, and this would be painted in a gum-like fashion. And then this would be where the mechanical skull is. So here, just kind of go through here and kind of decide what kind of shapes you want to punch in here. Uh, now, instead of sculpting it in, obviously you could go through and you could mask it. And if you want a little bit of a cleaner look, like if we invert this here and then just kind of punch this in, um, you're going to get kind of an alias line. It's not a huge deal, uh, but if you did, and again, just because like when we're concept sculpting, it's not a huge deal. Uh, you can always go back and rebuild as needed. But if you did want a cleaner read, you can go through here and you could do a edge loop edge loop mask border. And so now when you have this, you can say W and control drag this in and you'll get again, a much cleaner uh, read. And we can go through here, let's turn on L sim. So we're scaling across an axis here, punch this in. And then this is gonna be called, this would be kind of a version of light weighting. And it also looks like this has like a lattice network over it and then an underlying, um, it's kind of like in layers. So let's do that. Let's have a little bit of fun with that. So. I think that'll give us some decent results. So here we have the shape of our skull. Let's go ahead and make a uh, our first lattice network and we can go ahead and divide this up later. But what I'm gonna do is let's go through here and let's do a little bit of poly painting. So like I mentioned before, I guess we don't need that skull reference on anymore either. Um, so we can go under standard brush, we can turn on RGB and we can go through here and we can start painting where we want our lines to go. Uh, you can also go into the paint brush. Uh, instead of doing that, let's, no, let's do that. 
we can either do that or we can mask where we want our lines to go or at least the recesses of our lines. Hmm. Or we can also just mask by polygroup. So, you know, you can make it any color you want because we can mask by, uh, not polygroup, but mask also by um, poly paint. So what we're basically doing here is painting on the vertices. So let's say we want a line through here and then this is gonna be our line structure. And you know what, I'm gonna duplicate this off while I'm thinking about it. So we want this panel cut and all of this stuff up here can be gone. So you know what, it might be easier. Change my mind. Let's do this. Hit C to get grab white and I'll just paint over here. And then again, this is the kind of thing, again, I keep reiterating this. Um, if I'm doing a tutorial series and I did my dry run, I wouldn't have to do this kind of exploration because I would have already figured all this stuff out and I wouldn't have to be going like, hey, you know what? I changed my mind, I changed my mind. And that's why in my videos, I look way smarter than I really am. It's all in editing. It's all movie magic. In real life, I don't really even know what's going on right now. That's my secret. Don't tell anybody. So these are gonna be our lattice structure here. And um, underneath here is gonna be just kind of stuff going on. So we're gonna use this to determine, and this is kind of like a light weighting technique what I think they call light weighting in the biz, where if you want something to be structurally, have structural integrity, but also not be like a solid piece of metal, uh, you go through there and you run a, you do some math, people way smarter than me do the math, or computers way smarter than me do the math, and then they determine where you're allowed to not have material and where you can have material and let's go through here and we'll put a, a line right through here. So I'm just tapping C to select white and then C to select red. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this red into a mask. And uh, that's about all I can see. So you know what? Uh, we can just have a little bit of fun. So let's say this is gonna go through here and then this can kind of come out here a little bit. And this can kind of come here. And this will be the start of that upper area of the lattice. And we're gonna have a, like a kind of a layered network of lati, lattices. Let's hit C here. And we'll call this our first round of lattices. Good enough. I look about right. Oops. Now I do, it does look like I am gonna want a, a place for these teeth to sit. So we'll come down here and we'll give, we'll make sure that these end up having teeth plugged in. The soft palette and stuff can kind of be sitting up in there somewhere, but that's gonna be part of our deeper lattice, I suppose. So this is gonna be lattice numero uno. So what we can do is we can go, now that we've painted this, we could have just masked it, uh, but since we didn't, we can go down here to masking and we can do mask by color, uh, mask by poly paint. And we're just gonna choose that red. So now, We've got this masked out. We can turn our poly paint off and then invert that, choose a white color. And now we have this uh, area. So let's go through here. And again, we're gonna do a quick edge loop, mass border, just to kind of clean that up a little bit. And this can be our initial um, group, but you know what? Let's say delete hidden. Uh, I am gonna go ahead and, let's go ahead and put in some orbits in there. This is a little bit, a little bit much. So we're gonna go through here and one more time, edge loop mass border, and isolate this. If you are, if you do have select lasso turned on, it may grab a ring. That's part of the charm of select lasso. Now, if we want to clean these edges up a little bit, again, we can go down here to masking, mask by features border, invert that mask, and then uh, deformations, polish by feature open circle, and that'll kind of clear that up. So this can be that and if you want to make any changes to this you can go ahead and slice through some stuff but I think this will be okay so let's do this let's say uh, zero measure uh, keep groups off depth size down to zero half 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 okay and this can be again that's kind of our the start of our lattice here and if you want to you can go through here and you can move the stuff around you can use shift to smooth it if you need to you can pull these things out uh, to a little bit harsher corners if you want 
Although, now that I look at this, I'm not really sure I dig it. Oh, you know why? I had a polygroup on there already. Okay, no big deal. So, you know what? We're going to mask this to here. Run another. Let's do this. Control W. Delete hidden. And now I'll just clean this up a little bit. Sorry about that. I just saw something I didn't like. And you know what? If you don't like it, fix it. Because, number one, it's easy to fix. Number two, you don't want to polish a turd. So, not that I'm thinking this is like a uh, fine art or anything, but you know what I mean. Like, if you're doing actually something artistic and cool, then fix it. Um, uh, not to say I am at all. Okay, so zero measure half, and we'll go ahead and just get this to something reasonable so we can start uh, giving this some thickness. So this will be the start of our lattice structure for the head here. So let's go back to our skull here. And on this one, again, let's just fill this with a white color. This is going to sit underneath this. So let's go ahead and say this is our structural support. We're going to inflate this to like negative 10. So this is again going to sit underneath. And we can go ahead and we can paint another lattice structure under here. Or this can be like just more of a mechanical, greebly kind of thing sitting underneath. It should be fine. Let's go ahead. You know what? Let's do an... I, I want to do... Oops. Even more. Uh, now this is a little bit gross, but that's okay. Because really, what we're really more concerned about is um, what's underneath here. So it's going to be kind of our brainy area. And in here, we can do another pass. Where we kind of have a little bit of fun. I'm just kind of sculpting. Let's go ahead and hold down Shift, go into Sculptures Pro, and we're just going to clean up some of this more egregious holes that were left behind as we started getting crisscrossing geometry because we were deflating along very thin meshes. Say just mirror and weld. And you know what? Let's grab a little piece of this. Control Shift A, delete hidden. Now get rid of some of that garbage. And then again, there we go. Not too bad. Turn off Sculptures Pro and clean that up quite a bit. Good enough. So now, um, through here, we could do another panel loops if we wanted to. So we talked about this earlier, where we can go through here and we can do our edge loop. I don't want to melt it anymore, so I want to make sure I go in here to our uh, polish, turn that off, and then I want to do elevation negative 100 because I don't want to inflate it. And then we'll do another panel loops here, and we'll drop that loops down to 1. That's all I really need. And that'll go ahead and give us again kind of that lattice structure and we can we can detail this out or we can model or we can even use our Damien standard brush doesn't really matter so let's do a quick crease poly group crease level of two smooth sub dip of three or crease level of one smooth sub dip of three and that'll be again just kind of our working mechanical stuff that still looks a little bit sharp crease level of zero yeah don't even need to crease it at all okay good enough and then bringing this back. How do I want this to look? Oh, it's got wires and stuff and all sorts of neat things. Okay, we'll do one more layer of lati on this. And then we'll do, and then this one we'll just mask. So we'll go through here and we'll kind of do this and then maybe this will go up this way and this will go around. Oops. And again, I don't, you know what, I don't need to look. I can just make something. All we're looking for is shapes here. So let's just kind of follow the contours of this. Be like, okay, yeah, it needs to stay semi-structural along here. And then down through here, this can be kind of neat. And then over back over to here and say back around. Good enough, you know, don't overthink it. And if you want to put in like a little Easter egg, like, oh my gosh, this is the symbol. I don't want any spoilers for Westworld for you guys. If you haven't watched it, 
Season three is pretty, pretty interesting. Pretty, pretty interesting. And then again, we're just looking for like kind of structural components in here. So where this would end up, maybe this would be a little structural piece here and this could go up here. So, and you know what, we'll just continue this line over here. So this will be like, something like that. Okay, okay. Through here. And you could play around with the thicks and thins a little bit. It looks like some of this uh, is thicker and then some of it gets a little bit thinner. So I give it a little bit of variation in here. Might, might in, uh, increase the visual interest. So I can go through here and mask this out and then Maybe some of those cross lines. Let's do this. All right, and then And if you wanted very, very precise, like if you wanted to rebuild this, you could use these spheres to kind of rebuild the exact geometry you want. I'm playing it fast and loose because it does look organic, so I don't really need to worry about that. Um, if you want to sharpen these lines, you can hold down Control Alt and sharpen it up. If you hold down Control, you can fade those lines a little bit and then sharpen them up, and that'll actually kind of round those corners out for you. Um, that's not too bad. It actually made the lines a little bit thinner, which is a happy accident there. You can control the amount that it masks when you do that by uh, looking in your preferences. So if this is the second round of our lattice here, we'll call that good enough. And again, just one more time down here to edge loop mass border, isolate this. Oops, hold on. Duplicate this off, isolate this, delete hidden. And on this duplicate here, let's inflate this down again, let's say negative 10. And we'll also hit Control W. So now we've got another round of lattices. And then underneath all of this, we're going to put some wires and other mechanically bits that will kind of give us a nice layered effect. Yeah. Okay. So here we got this. Let's go ahead and do another zero mesh, death size down to zero half. Beep. Boop. Beep. And if you're getting a weird midline uh, down through here, you can also try, hold. Um, we have to open up. The actual menu over here, you can hold down Alt and Zero Mesh, and that'll give you a different midline algorithm. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, so we got these mechanically bits. And uh, on this one, instead of using panel loops, you could go in here and again, extrude polygroup all. Let's pull these in and then hit D for dynamic subdivisions. And uh, on this one, let's since we went a fair bit lower, let's go ahead and do a crease polygroup. Crease level of one, smooth subdiv of two. That'll give us a little bit of a more consistent look. And in fact, let's we can also go in here to our uh, Polish by Features, and a feature can be a polygroup. So if you want to, um, you can polish this out. And if you really want to polish it like crazy, go in here to Open Circle, and you can really kind of get that kind of organic streamlined look. Uh, not really what I'm going for. So what I want to do, let's do Shift D. Let's run a crease tolerance on here, and then do just a slight closed circle polish by features and then hit D. So I just wanted to smooth that geometry out just a little bit. And in fact, even down here, let's do a polish by features, close circle. And you know what, let's do a crease. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. And then this one should be crease level of zero. There we go. Now we're cooking. Crease level of one. Smoothed of three. All right, all right. All right, so we got two layers done. Yeah, and then it looks like this bottom layer, like we could have done another layer of lattice underneath these to kind of give it some depth, but it looks like just, I'm going by the reference, it looks like in the reference just underneath here is this bunch of mechanically stuff. So one more pass, go through here and use our Sculptures Pro to kind of clean this up a little bit. 
And the reason I'm using Sculptors Pro is that it really, it can actually go through and delete geometry. If you just use Smooth, um, it's going to leave some gross stuff behind. And then this one, it can start creating holes, but that's okay. You can just re-dynamesh and uh, get that back. And then we can turn off Sculptors Pro. And then again, we just, we're just looking for a framework to kind of put stuff on. So if we want to put wires on here, let's go to B. You could go BC brush curve and use like curve tube or curve multi-tube and just start drawing wires out. Um, I prefer just to go ahead. I have a, I have a brush already made. Uh, in fact, if you want more on this type of thing, if you go to my ZBrush Summit. So I did a ZBrush Summit presentation at ZBrush at Pixelogic's place. Uh, and we, you know, talk about making mechs and wires and stuff like that. Uh, and in here, there's a lot of like controlling curves. And in fact, after I got back home, I did this demo where we just went through, I have like 96 videos in here of just everything I talked about in my ZBrush presentation kind of broken down in their own individual videos. Um, and then this is the, uh, this is the uh, cinematic we did. Oh, also, if you know any character leads out there who want to work at certain affinity, have them apply online. But uh, yeah, if you want more uh, the curve stuff we're going to be doing, you can check that playlist out. OK, let me get caught up here. Uh, OK, if I missed any, I apologize. Hey, Chris, thanks for showing up. Uh, way to use curves mode with alpha texture for transparency. Like if you have a card with a UV and a texture with the alpha information, I can see you port on ZBrush like using a brush with curves. Curve mode with alpha texture for transparency. Mm. That I'm not sure. I'm not positive. I have to, I'd have to see what your end result or what the visual target is or what you're trying to achieve in ZBrush to see if I could recreate it. 2D artist animator. I'm done to do more of ZBrush and become more familiar with it. That's a cool thing too. Is um, use you can use ZBrush to supplement. So in ZBrush 2019, what's new? Um, you can see I you know I made a model to Mac. You can model whatever you want, and then you can go through here and you can do non photorealistic rendering NPR and non photorealistic NPR. Yeah, and uh, you know you can get a very illustrative look. So if you're ever having any problems or you want to like do some uh, exploration in 3D and then just you, know, you can draw over it. This is something we did. Actually, let's just do that. Um, if we're having problems or we want to investigate something, let's turn on this and let's turn on this and it's like, okay, uh, what do we what do we want this to look like? Uh, what kind of exploration do we want to do? And uh, we could also, I wonder if we could set these to layers. Let's do this here. Yeah. Uh, so you could go through here and be like, okay, I want to explore this a little bit. Let's go turn on perspective. Um, you could also do like a BPR render and get some shadows going. Let's go into our render settings and let's do a shadow and let's take that global strength down a bit and then also crank that angle up a little bit so it gets a little blurrier as it kind of fades out. And then also one more thing you may want to do is increase your rays just to increase that shadow quality just a bit. So you have this and go through here and let's say print screen like so and then copy to clipboard and then we'll just go through here and say paste this and then you just go through here and just do a little bit of exploration where you're like okay let's have a little bit of fun in here of uh, you know what we want our wires to look like. So let's go ahead and again, just looking at this here. Okay, yeah. So through here, uh, looks like we got like bundles of wires through here and you can go through. And if you wanted to like also explore like underneath lattice works, you can go through here and be like, if I want a, like a lattice to come across here and you can always go into spotlight later and project this back. You could also use zap link if you wanted to um, and do that kind of thing. Uh, but in our case, you know, this kind of exploration. Or if you wanted to, you know, if you had a skull in here and you're like, I want to do a little exploration. And like, how, how would you put a head over here? Let's have a little bit of fun. And this is just like an easy way to get um, 3D information. So even, even as a 2D artist, you can work in the round in 3D. And then you can go through here and you can be like, you know what? Let's, uh, let's figure out what kind of head we would want to put on the skull. 
And uh, again, you have free perspective, you have free shadow casting and all that good stuff. Um, you can go through here and you can kind of have a little bit of fun with that kind of thing. So here, a little chin on here, and we can just continue to fade this opacity out just a little bit. Um, so the structure's still there. Like I said, you're still getting the information. And then you can go through here and be like, okay, here's where my nose is. And here, and then put some uh, big old eyebrows on them. So you can use this to kind of do, and if, especially if you're doing like mechanical stuff where it's like, oh, I, I want to make a spaceship and I'm doing a comic book panel and I want to do like 17 different views, just do a really quick model and then you can just uh, render it out or not even render it, just bring it into your program of choice and go through here and you can kind of, you know, use that as your backdrop. So you're spending more time, you know, figuring out what's cool and then less time you know, going through and having to figure out perfect perspective or perfect shadow, stuff like that. So, food for thought. Cool. Yes, everybody stay safe. Thank you, uh, Crackle2012. Uh, any advice on learning anatomy? Where should it start comes to learning anatomy? How long do you think someone should sculpt per day to improve? As much as you can afford. The more you do it, the more... Um, the, the better you'll get, the faster you'll get at getting better. Um, we did actually on the live stream full episodes here, actually you can just go to my homepage. Um, I mean, I've got some anatomy on here, starting anatomy, Proco's good. Uh, there's a, you can get anatomy books. Really the important thing about anatomy is actually sitting down and like drawing it and doing it, not so much like reading about it. Uh, I've, I'm guilty of doing a lot of reading and not a lot of doing. Um, but in this one, this live stream, we did a body block out from scratch. So if you wanted to see the making of this guy, we literally started from, looks like just a Z-sphere. And then we talked about anatomy and zygo, um, use zygote body to kind of go through and talk about muscles and stuff. So there's a lot of resources out there. Anatomy 360 is another one where you can bring in um, just 3D models and rotate them around and kind of do that kind of thing. So here you can see, um, you know, as again, we're kind of drawing and discovering you know, like using our 3D stuff for drawing. And so we talked a little bit about anatomy here. You can give that a shot. This is the body block out from scratch. That might be a good, kind of a fun one. Um, cool, no problem. Thanks everybody. Merge two things in the same mesh without losing subject level. Someone here streaming the other day showed a way to do it, said it had been a feature for a long time. Um, you can delete higher. Let's go out of edit. Always switch. If I understand correctly, I'm trying to think of uh, any gotchas. So you have a ring here, make poly mesh 3D, and then you want to append a cone. And then this one's going to have subdivisions. This one's going to have subdivisions. Now, if you if they're the same amount of subdivisions, um, you can merge them. And when you merge them, they'll maintain their subdivision levels, no problem. And then you were saying, um, yeah, merge things without losing subdivision levels. Um, if, if you have this, Control Shift A, and then we say split hidden, which we can't do, uh, we can say delete lower, split hidden, and then you can go through here and reconstruct. Um, although without a cage, it is going to melt back. Um, but here, here's we have like here's five subdivision levels, and on this one we only have three. So now when I merge this one here, um, it's going to keep my subdivision levels, but only three of them, because you can't recreate two more subdivision levels out of something that it didn't have it. Um, so you will kind of lose two subdivision levels on this one, uh, but if they're the same amount of subdivision levels, it should do it automatically when you merge them down. Way to use curves mode with alpha texture for transparency. Yeah, I'm not sure what that one, what you what you mean by that. If I have a card with a UV and a texture in alpha, see on the viewport is yours. Oh, oh, uh, yeah. Not in real time, probably. You can make a card uh, with a texture on it, and then as long as in your texture map, you have uh, transparency turned on, and anything in your texture that's pure black, it will show up on the render uh, when you hit BPR, it'll show up transparent. So you can make a curve brush with a card that just goes along a path. And then the trans, as long as the image that you're repeating along a path, although really that's kind of a pain. You can use fiber mesh 
Eh, I can't think of a real elegant way to do that. If you had one thing to zebra what would it be? Cloth simulation. Cool. Um, yes, everything's everybody's doing good here. Uh, we're in Austin. Uh, my wife just got back. It sounded like taking the dog for a run. She had an upset stomach this morning, which is why I was awake at 3:30. Uh, but I seem to be doing okay. I had a lot of coffee. Cool. Hey, side effects. Got any tips for topology brush? Um, actually, we could use topology brush for some of the stuff we're doing. Um, so in lieu of uh, going through here, if we go into solo mode here, in lieu of going through here and masking and zero meshing, you can go BTO and just use the topology brush to kind of go through here and like do 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 ding dong. There you go. So you can go through here and use this. Now I'm not a, there are some people who can like use the topology brush to like retopologize ahead. I'm, I'm more, I'm a little bit more of a Z sphere guy. Um, but Z topology brush is pretty easy. You know, you just kind of, you can hold down alt and drag and that'll clean it up. Uh, and then you can continue lines. And then as wherever you make cross lines on your mesh, it's going to stick to them. So you can kind of just use this. Then when you tap off, depending on the brush thickness, uh, it'll go ahead and make those. And then you can go ahead and say like uh, split mass points. And here we can go through with our Z modeler brush, BZM, Q mesh, poly group ball, hold down shift and you can make that thicker or thinner. Um, you can go through here. We'll run a crease on this and then turn on like dynamic smooth set of three. Smooth set of a four, crease level of two. Um, and you kind of get hard surface stuff going like this. And then because it's simpler geometry, uh, you can go through here. You can start you know, using Q mesh brush and kind of actually, you probably stick these together if you wanted to. Sit here. Is it going to stick? No. Well, you can bridge them together. So you can go like this. You can go here and let's set shifty. So we'll say delete and then. Oops, delete, and then bridge two holes here to here, and then you can kind of like this. And let's just go a quick, um, let's do a quick auto groups, or no, group by normals, and then uncrease all, and then crease PG, and then turn on dynamic, and um, you can get rid of these just by using like Q mesh. It's kind of easy way to punch in holes like this. So, um, but like I said, you can say you can bridge these. These holes will probably work a little better because a little farther apart. Uh, so bridge two holes. I want to bridge here to here, and you just pull out and there you go. I always like to do a quick mirror and weld. Um, let's do this mirror, mirror and weld, and let's also do a weld points. So I'm getting a little bit up through here. I knew I was going to have a little bit of an issue, but that seems to have fixed it. And then again, uncrease all, crease, turn on dynamic. So you can very quickly do hard surface stuff like this too. Oh, that's not too terrible. You know what? We'll keep it. Again, that'll just kind of help us with our layered look a little bit. And the cool thing about this, and why I like using um, a little bit easier to work with geometry, is it's very simple to go through here and just kind of start painting and then hold down shift, oops, Q mesh polygroup ball, and just kind of push along that surface normal to make things thicker or thinner and it smooths very nicely, um, as opposed to like when you're sculpting and trying to extract and you got a lot of geometry, this kind of makes it a hassle. But this is much, much easier to kind of go through and kind of push and pull these things around. So let's grab all of these here. And once I'm done, it's like, oh, I messed up my polygroups. That's all right. We'll just do another uh, group by normals, mirror and weld, and then we can go through here. And again, because we're pushing around so few points, um, it's a lot easier. And another thing too, if you want to add a little more detail or give it a little bit of a different bevel profile treatment or anything like that. You can go through here and you can do like an inset polygraph ball region. And uh, this is problematic. Let's do I'm not really digging that. Oops. Let's turn off Dynamesh. 
Oh, like I said before, let's do a quick save. So hit nine. And then in your quick save here, we can grab that latest quick save. And that should help us kind of clear our history out a little bit. Uh, make it maybe a little bit less crashy. So we got this, and then what was I doing? Uh, increase all, increase dynamic. Oops. And then we were going to, um, wow, just lost my mind. Hmm. We were doing, um, we were moving some points around. Oh, right. So uh, shift D, let's go in here. And first of all, you want to make sure these things are where you want them. Because, you know, we're doing some kind of destructive stuff. It's not like it's on a modifier stack or anything. So I want to make sure also hold on Alt, start painting, tap shift, because I want these to be all the same poly group around that outer face. So we can now go in here to inset polygroup all region. We can pull in um, a little bit of this, and then we can say Q mesh polygroup all, tap shift, oops, that shift, and that can kind of give us a little bit of a different profile. Another thing you can do is you can go down here, and then you, if, wherever you have a crease, you can also go into your bevel here, underneath crease, you can actually add bevels along uh, wherever you have things creased or wherever you have things polygrouped. So if you hold down uh, control, uh, you can actually just add uh, a bevel along here. So now when we run our crease tolerance dynamic, you'll see we'll get a little bit more of uh, that kind of look, which can kind of maybe be interesting. Um, do I love that? Let's look at our reference. Mm, it's a little thick, so we'll undo that. But I mean, if it works for you, it works for you. So anyway, a topology brush. And then uh, we'll get into putting some wires on this thing as well. So uh, this is where it gets into, um, I like to use a brush I've already made that works a little bit better than the curve brush, I think. Um, it's also a little bit simpler. So we're gonna go in here to our military. This is an old folder of mine. And then simple tube. And this is basically just a simple tube brush. Now if I want to start making a bunch of wires and I don't want to attach to anything in particular, I can very quickly just go in here to insert. Just any any poly mesh is fine. You can do a sphere or whatever. I'm going to go ahead and scale this down. I'm going to stick it right in the middle of this head here and then go into transparency mode so you can see it and then you can see this little thing's just going to be hanging out there and it'll catch uh, any IMM brushes, brush stuff that I'm doing. Uh, so now with this as my base, I can go through here and I can start just um, using this as a place to kind of put my greebles and stuff. So I can go through here and I can start putting in like wires along the surface and let's embed these a little bit actually. So let's go into brush depth and we'll say embed, whoops, not depth mask, embed of zero. So it's just gonna sit right in the middle of my mesh. So you can kind of go through here and we can start putting in um, wires. And I can always make the wires thicker or thinner later. I'm not too concerned about that. Um, I'm not really too concerned about anything. But uh, if I want to kind of fill in some of these spaces, one thing I can do is I can drop in, again, just a temporary mesh. We'll go ahead and say split mass points. This will go ahead and inherit any DynaMesh properties of the mesh it came with, which I guess it wasn't turned on. Um, but we can kind of move this back in here. And if I want to put wires like in this area here, which it looks like it has. Uh, I can just put, again, a, just a temporary mesh back here. And then either right on top of this or I can just grab my other polygon, poly mesh here. And if we wanna just show these two, we can. And then brush here, and then I can go through here and I can just start putting in um, some wires along here. So if I want to, I can tap off and just put in another wire. You can also make a brush that does multiple wires at a time. Um, this is pretty fast though, and I, it gives me a little bit more variation. Um, I can have a little bit more fun and I can go through here and I can say, okay, you know what? Oops, this mesh I don't need anymore. So I can just go ahead and delete it. And then on this wire mesh here, it's like, okay, I want to play these wires by themselves. So grab all of them, control shift A, split hidden. Let's do a quick group by normals. And then again, mirror and weld across the X axis, L sim turned off. And then uh, since we've done that, uh, we can go through here. And if I wanted to inflate these, um, 
I could do I could inflate one by one. So if I want variation in here, I can do Q mesh um, polygroup all, or we can do extrude polygroup all. So we can do it just do it one by one. Or if I want to do them all as part of the same mesh here, it looks like these things didn't cap very nicely. I go here and I can grab their caps. Control W, invert that. Control W, make those all one polygroup. And let's just run a quick. I don't like the looks of those, so we're going to do a quick weld points here. Uncrease all. Crease PG. So now if I turn on dynamic, and you see this is what it looked like smooth. Um, but if I want to increase or decrease all of them at the same time, we can do again Q mesh polygroup all, all, polygroup all, or extrude polygroup all, and then hold down Shift as we kind of smooth and we just push along those surface normals. So. There's our bundle of wires here in this one. Um, we can also go through here and we can do a quick polish by features if you want to kind of smooth them out. And again, these features are over here um, as creases and as polygroups in this case. And you can also go through here with your move brush and you can say brush auto masking. We're going to turn, we have topological already still turned on. So we can go through here now and we can kind of start like overlapping these things and kind of moving these things around. And we can get as messy as we want to. Um, because we can always go back in on say, it's like, okay, oh, we're getting a little bit messy with these. We can take these two, control shift A, oops. And then we can just do it again, just another polish by feature, just to kind of smooth them out a little bit. And then when we hit D. Um, and you can also use like, there's a couple, there's, like I said before, uh, there's a lot of different methods in that one playlist I showed you. Now yeah, let's go ahead and turn off topological, and then you can just move stuff around all you want here. So let's turn everything back on, and let's hide his face here. So we didn't get as far as I wanted uh, with this particular sculpt, uh, but we're getting there. And again, a lot of this stuff is just like box modeling. So let's go in here. I'm gonna hit my comma key, brush, hard surface kit bash, and I just have some like greebly pieces in here, like structural components maybe. I don't know. Let's see what's in here. I'm just looking for like filler. Um, just little things I can kind of plop in there. Uh, and I don't need anything super duper. Um, or you know what, since you guys probably don't have this, let's just do this, BI brush insert um, <laughs> model kit. You guys have this brush, let's hit M. And uh, yeah, perfect, right in here, I'm gonna take this one and we're gonna plop this right down the middle here. And we'll go ahead and do a split mass points and we can kind of go through and just start uh, putting in some components here. Let's hit M and let's see if there's anything else cool in here we can kind of pull from. This is kind of neat. So we'll put another one over here. I think we can actually go through and we can actually snake a wire through here. We can use these spheres for that. Um, so yeah, maybe we'll do that. Not that you would ever really see this necessarily uh, in any meaningful way, but uh, we can have a little bit of fun with it. So we can put that there and then Sorry, I'm looking at some reference here. Also, let's go back to this thing here. Let's turn on our dynamic again. There we go. Also, if you wanted to put in some screws on here, we'll go back to this subtool here. And we'll say brush insert industrial parts, hit M. We can put in some bolts or some tiny like little Phillips head screws. And if we wanted to embed them, hmm, this is probably more trouble than it's worth. I would pick and choose your battles here, where it'd be like, you know what? Oh, here's another thing too. Uh, turn on LSIM if you want to scale along that axis, or you can also go in here and turn that Z intensity down just a bit. So if you want a thinner profile on that screw, and also if you want the same kind of, or same size of screw, just hold down um, control as you're dragging it out. So that way it'll snap to your brush size. If you want to go like, you get a screw, and you get a screw, and you get a screw, um, it'll stay nice and consistent. And then also maybe underneath here. And this can actually just be like a simple, um, oh, I need to make sure that this is actually attached to our teeth down here. I forgot to leave a little bit of space. Oh, actually, this is supposed to be our teeth attachment area. 
Hmm. Let's do this. Let's turn off everything except for that and our teeth. And we'll just adjust this just a tiny, tiny bit. Because I, I left it in there, but I uh, wasn't really paying attention. I probably could have done a little bit better job with this right in here. You can also use, uh, there's a smooth brush in here you can use for this type of thing. Or you know what, probably easier. Just go in here again to masking, mask by poly groups. And now you can go in here and just leave those edges alone and just kind of smooth out the geometry in between. There we go. Anyway. Skin flap. And then we're going to put some wires in here and some just miscellaneous greebles. So brush, insert, machine parts, model kit, IMM parts, boolean. This model kit's my best bet. And you know what? Also, another thing we do, these have enough geometry on them. If you have uh, this thing selected, you can also go in here to modifiers under your brush. You can turn on projection strength. So as you're drawing this out, um, it'll go ahead and curve and kind of fit the underlying uh, mesh. So we'll go ahead and um, so we can go ahead and like split mass points and hit D for dynamic. And that's smooth enough, I suppose. Let's increase level two, smooth level three. Let's increase level one. There we go. So you can kind of have uh, some underlying information like that. Now this one, probably want to punch in there and just have it kind of sitting underneath. And in this case, we could take this one and we can say, you know what, you, uh, there's a plugin you can do that will actually mask around. It'll actually take a subtool and mask the, uh, the subtool that it interpenetrates. Um, ooh, I'm over time. All right, we'll wrap this up and then I'll get off. So just in case there's anybody else that needs to come on. And again, if you want to, you can also edge loop mask border. W, control tap this one, control drag in, get a little bit of a cleaner look. Uh, turn on LSIM, scale this in just a bit. And let's also do to a Polish by features. Hmm. Well, this one you might want to rebuild. Let's turn on Dynamesh. When in doubt, just Dynamesh it. And again, you can get as rebuildy as you want, but at the end of the day, that's kind of what we're going for. So I'm going to go ahead and We'll, we'll get rid of this half of his face over here. You know, we'll leave that one on. There we go. So again, just kind of going in there, putting in some greebles and getting some lattice structure in here for your light weighting. And then you'll have a little cool little, uh, you know, Westworld style render. Um, yeah, my reference is just basically Westworld open face literally Westworld open face. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay, I think I got that up. Uh, drawing tablet is this Intuos Pro, just a little medium size. Sometimes when I punch holes with cube mesh, I end up with a lot of odd back facing policy on the garbage instead of a clean hole. Um, oh, it, they, you would just need to make sure that um, the front and back geometry is uh, the same. So if I, you know, Q-mesh this back, uh, I might have unpredictable results. Um, but if it's the same geometry, I won't. So now I can just punch that in. You know, and that's about what I would expect. So we can do a crease polygroup here. And that's not too terrible. Go to here, you, you, and you can all be punched through, and then crease polygroup, and then dynamic. 
Any tips for sculpting short fur? I'm working on some Sonic for a new movie. Uh, sculpting fur? Oh. Uh, okay, yeah, I would actually use fiber mesh and then thicken it up. So if you go to my art station page, like this guy's mustache was 3D printed. So this guy right here, I printed the 3D, I did fiber mesh for his mustache, but when I went to convert that to the 3D print, which is this guy here, you can see uh, I just fattened it up a bit. So instead of trying to sculpt that or use a bunch of IMM brushes, just use fiber mesh and fatten them up. Uh, topology move and standard move brush is that the topology move is going to look at the uh, topology around it. So you can move close things uh, apart. Cool. All right, everybody. Um, you know what? Uh, I'll stream on Thursday on my channel. That's going to be have Mike Twitch stream and also my YouTube channel, uh, which we've already talked about. So we'll go ahead and finish this up on my channel and we'll do some cool renders and all that good stuff. We'll finish greebling this guy out, putting more wires in it, uh, finish his lower jaw out a little bit, and then uh, we'll kind of open his face up and see if we can't do a cool, maybe do some cool with his eyeball or something like that. So cool. Thanks everybody. And I'll catch you next time.